Hello and welcome to ApenasImagens.com channel. I'm Wagner Lungov and in this video I'm going to show a project for an enlarger head using LEDs. I published a, a similar project in September 2017 but this is a very much improved one and what I think it's also important is to say that it's a complete, complete project. Uh, this time I'm releasing all the information including even the code for the microprocessor that goes inside this control box and there are many new features that were even in the structure of the project I changed a lot the parts of the project are first we have a power adapter that is a 12 volts 10 amps uh, power supply for the whole system but it's very easy to find it's a very common one then we have the box that's a diffuser you see this white part here is a diffuser this is the actual source of light for the enlarger this is the head of the enlarger and what is new here is that I'm using RGB um, LEDs I'm using a 3 watts RGB LEDs you see the red green and blue so it's a it's a very different from the previous project because there I used only green and blue but later I realized that the red although it's not seen by the paper by the photographic paper it's important for the operator to, to yield a brighter image for like dodging and burning focusing framing and so on and so forth well then we have so we have the diffuser here then we have the control box the control box is um, where the microprocessor is. The interfaces with the operator are a keypad, a display and there are also sound signals. So it has a double function. It's a timer for timing the flashes while you are printing but it's also a mixer because using uh, RGB colors it has to to balance the green and blue in order to allow you to use multi-grade papers so you can go from low contrast up to the high contrast uh, using this mixer function that is embedded in here in the control box it has also it's important uh, a socket here for a safe light here is the, the representing the safe light for demonstration purposes and it has also another socket for a conventional enlarger. Let us say that you build your, your LED head but you still have a 35 millimeter enlarger or a medium format enlarger and you want to use um, with this timer. No problem, I will show you in a while. This is representing here the conventional enlarger. It's a simple bulb. So you can control it through this outlet here. So about the box itself, the, the shape and, and the, the geometry of the box, um, it was made in a way that it can be fitted to a um, large format camera, for a quarter plate camera. That means a camera uh, using either 4 by 5 inches or 9 by 12 centimeters um, film format and I thought especially about the last ones from the film from the the last phase of the film photography the ones having this graph lock back many brands marketed cameras with this system here that you can easily remove the the, the ground glass and then I built a box that can be easily fitted in here so we have the latches that we can so the, the box is firmly secured in here okay so you turn your camera into an enlarger of course this part of the project can be adapted to fit inside the existing enlarger like I, I made the one the previous project was to fit inside the Durst laborator but I consider that if you are thinking of a large format enlarger, you certainly has, have um, a large format camera. So it's a way to, uh, I think this is probably the most 
uh, easy way for someone willing to get into the large format photography and producing a, a larger head using LEDs. Okay, and last but not least, they have this um, designed for 3D printing. This is a negative carrier that can go into the slot here. And here we go, it's ready. You can focus, frame and print some nice pictures with your new, if you build it, your new uh, and larger head. So next part of the video, it's a quick demonstration of the functionalities of this system. Okay, so let's go. I switched off the front light so you have a brighter view here of the lens. First thing, when you switch on the enlarger, the safe light comes on. Then you have three flashes of red, green and blue. And then the display lights up. That means the system is ready for, for you to use it. Normal, in a normal workflow, you, the first thing is to focus your pictures. In order to do that, you press the pound sign, then the safe light switches off, you have your enlarger on, then you can focus your picture, you can position your easel to frame your picture, and when you are done, pound sign again. Now you have to program the, the exposure. Look into the screen here, the first line shows in first place the contrast level. 5 is a middle contrast. Let us say that I'll put 9 to show you the, the, the color of the, the highest contrast. And let us say that I want 3 flashes of 0, 2 seconds. 3 flashes of 2 seconds. It's ready. If I press the start button, there he goes. And this is a mix of blue and red. It's the highest contrast level. Okay, so this is the third. When it finishes, there is a longer signal to tell you, okay, it's done. So this was nine contrast nine, three flashes, two seconds. Let us say now that I want zero. It's the lowest contrast level. It's only green and red. Then I go for the same three flashes. Okay. One thing that it's sometimes it's interesting in a dark room work is to switch off the safe light during the exposures. This is very important when you are doing dodging and burning. Then you want to have a, a clearer view of your image. Here you can configure that on the run. You press star one. And now if I do the same three flashes, the safe light is switched off during the exposure. Okay. Another thing is uh, sometimes you are working with very short exposures, like a few seconds, and then having tens of seconds might be important. You can configure that as well, pressing star 2. Then I will program here. 5 contrast, 2 flashes of 2 and a half seconds. You see, by pressing star 2, when you are keying your figures, you have access up to the tens of seconds. And then I press start. And the 2 flashes of 2 and a half seconds. There are more things, but for the video, I think I wanted just to show you the general uh, way of working. One thing may be is to show you how to switch the, the heads. Let us say that I want to use the conventional enlarger, the one that's plugged here. I press star 3. Now we change it to the conventional enlarger. If I switch it on, instead of this head, it goes energy to this head here. Okay. So that's basically the, 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 the way of working. There are things you can configure directly into the sketch. In the project documentation, I explain them all. And there are things you can configure here on the run. And that's basically how it works. Now, the last part of the video, I'll show you some recordings I made during the construction of the LED head. 
because I, I'm thinking of photographers, not especially people uh, familiar with robotics or the electronics or software. So, uh, especially soldering and and the way to prepare the printed circuit board, I consider that although in the in the website there is a lot of explanation and pictures, so on and so forth. It's important to have a, a view. I think in, with a video you can have a, a much better uh, understanding. So the next part is like a complement of the the website. I think that if you read and watch, you have a full understanding of how to proceed with these materials that probably you are not familiar with. So let's go next part.
Well, this is what I wanted to show you in this video. Uh, I hope you liked it. In case you came directly here to YouTube, in the video description, there's a link to the website. Over there, I made a very long post with many, many pictures, extremely detailed explanations, maybe even boring for those who are already familiar with this kind of uh, technology. But I know it's a rather complex project and I was considering photographers, not especially people already familiar with these technologies. I myself am not familiar. You saw that my soldering is lousy. It's very irregular, but it works. So if you are interested in, in this, um, in making this project, go for it. Be stubborn. That's a very important quality in do-it-yourselfers. And so thanks for watching and see you next time.